Yo, 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 Soup Squad! Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be going over the Ta 152H in air realistic battles. We'll talk about what it's good and bad at, how and why to play it, and why it's a great vehicle. Based German mains understand. This is a vehicle I thoroughly enjoy. I do think, however, that you must know what you're doing at least a little bit to be as effective as possible in this plane, which is why I make this video. Anyways, enjoy the gameplay, and hopefully you can learn something from my commentary. The Ta 152H is a sneakily great aircraft. To start, it gets an interceptor spawn. In my opinion, this is the biggest advantage of this plane over other fighters at its tier, like the P-51H or any Yaks. It doesn't climb as well as these planes, I'll talk about engine performance in a minute because it's actually a con, but you will be higher than most enemies at the start of the match anyways because of your air spawn, leaving you free to boom and zoom as you please. German pilots that use their brain can abuse the air spawn alone to achieve major success in this plane. Next, the energy retention is unmatched. I have difficulty losing speed on 0% throttle in this plane, doing full turns while I'm trying to make a landing, and that's not even an exaggeration. If you're able to lure someone into a protracted dogfight and avoid their nose for long enough, as long as it isn't a zero or spitfire or something that can immediately turn into you, you will eventually come out on top because they will run out of energy first. Even against a turn fighter, you can just use your attention to get separation before re-engaging. Another pro of this plane are the flaps. This plane's landing flaps feel like they make the biggest difference in turn rate out of any flaps I've used in game. If you're having difficulty in dogfights and you aren't already, start using them. Try to drop landing flaps for the fastest turn. Landing flaps at full deflection improve your turn rate by a whopping 56%. Keep in mind, these landing flaps will rip around 420 km an hour. Nice. Also keep in mind, your flaps being used will hurt you in a sustained fight and should only be used in moments you need to pull the nose around quickly, but they will help immensely if they're used in those right moments. The last pro I'm gonna talk about, because it really stands out to me, is the guns. It is difficult to get used to aiming both MG-151s and Mark 108s, which are the guns present on this plane. This is because they're both slow velocity, so don't go head on against American 50 cows from 2 kilometers away. In this sense, it could be argued that the guns are a con. However, when you do manage to hit, you will love your life. Most people will not only die, but will be vaporized in one shot. If I can find it, I'll throw in a clip here of me absolutely nuking a JU-288 out of the sky to show you what I mean. If not, that's awkward, but just bear with me. Just know that these guns are extremely satisfying to get kills with. The first and biggest drawback of this plane, in my opinion, is also one of the biggest pros. It just depends how you use it. If used wrong, you will die. The energy retention honestly makes it a problem to lose speed. If your goal is to make someone overshoot, unless they're diving on you from significant altitude, it will not happen, and you will probably die looking very stupid trying to slow down directly in front of someone. Next, your engine is just simply not as powerful as other planes at this tier. Instead of easily producing energy, you're simply good at keeping what you already have, and you should be playing accordingly. More on this later. The last significant con, in my opinion, is the matchmaker. If you've played 6.0 before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Those 6v6 games with 4 JU-288s, a ground-pounding Focke Wolf 190, and you and your Ta 152H. They can be fun sometimes if you manage to carry, which is very possible in this plane, but this isn't a reason for it to be acceptable. You'll also face some annoying things. If you're extremely unlucky, you'll go up against a BI-1, in which case you should probably just RTB and go back to hangar. I'm just kidding, but really there isn't too much you can do. More often, you'll see F2Gs, aka F2 jets. Be wary of these things and the speeds they can manage. On the topic of speed, you'll face some early jets, but 
I honestly don't find them to be too much of an issue unless they play the running away game. Otherwise, you'll have a fairly decent time up against pretty much whatever else you might face if you play it right. Speaking of playing it right, let's get into that. I decided fairly recently that I needed to reach top tier Germany. At the time, the Tau 152H was my highest BR plane, so I listened to my Twitch chat and I dropped a talisman on it. Here we are, maybe just a couple of weeks later, and I'm already two tiers higher than I was before the talisman and making a video on this vehicle because I love it so much. With the premium account and talisman, I pull off 15 to 20k RP matches more often than you might expect. I'd conservatively say that two thirds of all my matches get me over somewhere around 8k RP. My highest so far was in the ballpark of 33,000 from one match. So aside from just being a really good and fun vehicle to play, which should be the biggest reason to play it in my opinion, in my experience it's great for grinding those early German jets. As far as how to play it, keeping all of the pros of this plane in mind that I talked about, I'll give you three simple things to remember. Energy, energy, and energy. Abuse your air spawn as much as you can. As I said before, your climb rate isn't the best, but you should be above everyone when the furball develops anyways due to the air spawn. It's important to thin out the numbers as much as possible early on in the match when your energy advantage will be the greatest, so be aggressive. Eventually, you won't be able to boom and zoom anymore. When this happens, you should try to only be taking dogfights that you'll have an energy advantage in. Your engine is just not powerful enough to produce energy quick enough to keep up in a dogfight with other planes at this tier. Like I was saying before, this should be compensated for by your energy retention. If you start with more, or sometimes even equal amounts of energy, and you hold on to it better than the enemy does, you will eventually win before the engine performance gap will matter because they'll lose their energy first. Do not go into a dogfight with no energy to start and just expect your flaps to carry you through it. It won't go well. On this topic, please use your flaps. They make this plane a significantly better dogfighter when they're used correctly. Just remember, they will bleed your energy quicker and should be used properly, if not sparingly. Also, do not rip them. Doing this is throwing away a significant part of your plane's performance. The last point I'll make on how to play this plane is to have fun. Not everything in this game has to be serious and sweaty. Yeah, this is definitely one of those planes where the more knowledgeable you are and the harder you try, the better your KD will be. It isn't really a beginner friendly plane. But who cares about your KD? I know I don't. Bomber hunting, going head on with people, even dogfighting planes you know you probably shouldn't can all be very fun. Sometimes the time might even surprise you with how it performs against something. And having fun goes for every vehicle I play. In fact, I should make a video on this. How to have fun playing a video game. I'm not sure what it is, but something about that title just doesn't sit right with me. If you're more of a numbers person, and you want to see some performance data, check out the description. I've linked a spreadsheet made by Adam the Engineer, shout out to him, go check him out, containing basically every tier 3 and 4 prop and their energy retention. This will help you see why the Tau 152H is so good. Also, shout out to Miller from the Discord server. He collected the data for and put together the horsepower at altitude chart you're seeing on the screen now. This chart helps put into perspective your average engine performance at this tier and why you must abuse your energy retention so much. As usual, I hope everyone enjoyed and found some use out of this video. If you did, please leave a like, a comment, and consider subscribing, turning on post notifications, and checking out my other content. Anyways, I'll shut up. You all know the deal. This is Nimbo Soup, Nimbo signing out.